Hi everyone, it's me, Tim, and today I want to talk about damage numbers. Yes, those little numbers that fly off of people when you hit them in games. Because that's actually an interesting topic to talk about, and I got asked a question about it. Zandatsu asks, Dam Damage numbers are a feature that I feel sometimes gets treated as being insignificant. If you have any stories about the specific implementation of a small thing like this, and how all those little choices get made, I'd love to hear about it in a video. Are some things like this left entirely up to one person to implement, or is there always multiple people coming to a consensus over what works best? Are there things that feel unimportant during development, but upon reflection should have been given much more thought in terms of their implementation? I feel like damage numbers may be one of those things. You are right. Damage numbers are something that frequently, especially in a, I'd say in my older games, got left to like... Isn't it obvious we're just have a number fly up when they get hit? And or, or if we do that at all. I mean, Fallout and Arcanum had no such numbers. Um, I believe we left it to... It was enough to display something down in the console window and maybe put a status effect under their health bar. Uh, Temple, I think, was the same way. Um, I would say that the first time I spent serious time on damage numbers was on Wildstar and revisited this for the Outer Worlds and really looked in to exactly what we want there. Because combat is a big part of RPGs. You'll be spending a lot of time doing combat and a lot of part of what a lot of time spent doing combat is doing damage to people. So spending a little time on this seemingly insignificant feature really does help. And also it's very easy to make mistakes with this. I am still playing games today that I will have a character hit another character and it says 124. No, I didn't do 124 hit points of damage. I did 12 plus an additional 4. But those numbers came up right next to each other and it looked just like 124. So I still see those mistakes being made in major games today. And I think if you just sit back and come up with a good design, you can eliminate a lot of those problems. Now... When I talk about making that design for damage numbers, you need a lot of people looking into that. At the very minimum, you need the artist who's going to do it. Often, they consider themselves FX artists. Um, you need the system designer in charge of what the mechanics are for doing damage. You need your UX designer. You need a sound person there. And the programmer who's going to do it. And the reason you need all these people, and this is commonly turned into a strike team, is you need to know, hey, how is damage applied? And what kind of damage is applied? And how long does that damage last and keep applying? Because you may do damage from range attacks or from melee attacks or from hazards in the world. Some of them last. Some of them put a dot, a damage over time, and keep doing damage. And you want to associate the damage with the thing that did it. And show that it's it's it keeps happening. And one thing you can do with that is by how it looks, moves, is colored for you color seeing people, and how what they sound like. What we ended up doing on several of my games is a combination of font size, color, motion, and direction. So I'll walk through what we what we decided to, to do. The font size was based on the damage amount. Now you can do that two ways. If it's a big damage amount, you can use a big font. And if it's a small damage amount, you can use a small font. Or you can say critical hits always get done in a big font. Um, and grazes get done in a small one. And so regular damage is in the regular font. There are pros and cons to this. If you, if you say critical hits always get a big number, but the person rolls a one for damage and it quadruples to a four. It seems a little weird to see a big four happen. But of course, you want to convey that they got a critical visually. So some people are like, no, it should still be a big four. Because a big a big four from a critical should be treated slightly differently than a, a four from a regular damage attack. So you can go either way with that. For color and motion, we base that on damage type. And I thought this was really cool because it really helps convey it. And because color and motion were used in conjunction... It tended to do two things. One, you don't have to worry about colorblind people because they can pick it up from motion. And also, the 
because the color and motion will be different for damage, different damage types, if you hit someone, like I did, for 12 physical plus 4 acid, those will have different colors and different motions, so those numbers will move away from each other. And you will see that it was a 12 and a 4. I'll give you some examples of what we did. So fire was orange, and it wafted up above the person. So when they got hit for like 10 fire, we'd go 10. Electricity was yellow and zigzagged off to one side. So if you got hit by 10 electricity, it would go 10. If you got hit with acid, it was green and it dripped off of you. So it would go 10 and it would kind of stretch a little and go down. Physical damage was white and it just would go off at a direction, which was really cool because if you were burst attacked, which could happen with like with a machine gun or something, you'd see lots of numbers flying off of you like five, eight, seven, eight, two, six. And it was really cool because it looked, the, the person was usually also playing a reaction. So it looked really cool and it conveyed that they were being burst attacked in a very visceral way. Um, on Wildstar and on Outer Worlds, we put an entire team together for this. And like I mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, it had an artist and a programmer and a UX designer and a sound guy. We'd often put a specific producer on that to coordinate all of this because this actually took, this was a coordinated effort. That's why you needed a team to do it. Sometimes it even seat those people together on those teams. I know the artist and the UX designer frequently sat together so that they could work out the little details that always comes up when you're doing anything interface or HUD related. And we just found that if you sat them together, it kind of eliminated all that communications overhead. So they didn't have to wait for that once or twice weekly meeting, strike team meeting. They were in the same room. They could turn and go, hey, does this look right? Or, hey, did you want it to do this or this? Or is, are you sure this is the color you want? Because the RGB value is really close to another color you gave me. So those things, it just eliminates things quickly. And the reason we put a specific producer on it is that producer could watch all those people who were involved and make sure that their schedules aligned. So if the system designer was putting those mechanics together and the programmer was free to start coding it, you definitely want the UX designer and artist free too to give him the uh, details on exactly how that stuff was supposed to look. So it was interesting that something that many people considered so insignificant, I do not because it it's a big part of combat how you give information back. And most people look down at the console. But what's great about damage numbers is they're right there at the target that you're you tend to be looking at. And when it happens to you, you're often looking at yourself too. And it just reinforces whether or not you're taking a lot of damage or a little, what kind of damage you're taking, and how much damage without you having to go down to the console and go, oh, I stepped on a grenade trap. Or, oh, I got hit by a fireball. So I think there's a lot of little things like this in games that most people when they're playing a game think is tiny and inconsequential and it's not a lot of time and thought went into it and usually a group of people were involved in making it but damage numbers are a perfect kind of encapsulation of that i of that idea so zandatsu i'm glad you asked and i hope that answered your question